the web of life. Let me try from the first to indicate the point that we're aiming at. The point is this, that human consciousness is at the same time as being a form of awareness and sensitivity and understanding, it's also a form of ignorance. The ordinary everyday consciousness that we have leaves out more than it takes in. And because of this, it leaves out things that are terribly important. It leaves out things that would, if we did know them, allay our anxieties and fears and horrors. And if we could extend our awareness, you see, to include those things that we leave out, we would have a deep interior peace. Because we would all know the one thing that you mustn't know, you know, according to the rules of our particular social game, the one thing you mustn't know, that's really not allowed, that is the lowdown on life, and then the lowdown on the one hand means the real dirt on things, but the lowdown is also what is profound, what is mysterious, what is in the depths, and there's something left out. And our everyday consciousness screens this out in the same way that when you say you have weaving, you have, say, on this uh, rug here in front of us, when the black finishes here, the black threads will go underneath and then appear again over here, then they'll go underneath the white and then they'll appear again over here, you know? So that the back will be the obverse pattern of the front. Now, the world is like that. Our sense organs are selective. They pick out certain things. They are receptive. For example, we have a small, small band of uh, what you might call a spectrum of light, of sound, of tactile sensation and so on, to which the human organism is sensitive. But we know that outside that small band there is a huge range of vibrations to which we have built <coughs> instruments that are sensitive. Things like cosmic rays, ultraviolet rays, uh, <coughs> gamma rays, hard X-rays, and so on. They're all outside the band of our spectrum. And obviously, there are things that are outside the range of our instruments. We may build new instruments someday which will evoke, bring into our consciousness other orders of vibration altogether. But yet, as yet, we don't know about them. So you could imagine, you see, the universe is a vast, vast system of vibrations and has infinite possibilities. All these vibrations, you know, are like the strings on a harp. And the harps that the angels are supposed to play in heaven are really this huge possibility. See, when you play the harp, you select strings. You don't play all the strings. It's stupid to just run your finger along the whole edge of the harp, back and forth, back and forth, and go... What you do is you pick out with your fingers, select just like on the piano, you don't go... You pick out certain notes, and these make the patterns. But at the same time as you pick out, you reject what you don't pick out. But it's all there, constituting a fundamental continuity, the kind of continuity of the thread as they go to the back of the woven material and make up the obverse of the pattern that's on the front. Now, the question that is absolutely basic for all human beings is, what have you left out, you see? You are focused on certain things that constitute what you call everyday reality. Look, you single out people and you see them sitting, sitting, sitting all around. 
and you know there are things that are really there. And then behind the people are the houses or whatever we live in, and the, the earth, and behind all that the sky, and so on. But we see the world as a collection of rather disjointed events and things. And I might say to you, as you came in here today, now, my goodness, you all forgot something. <laughs> what did you forget? And you think, my goodness, did I put my pants on? Did I wear a sweater? Did I put my glasses and my hair on, or my wig, or whatever? <laughs> and uh, no, no, it's none of that. It was something you've forgotten. See, everybody's forgotten something. You left it out. You just missed it. See, see? And so, I can bring this out, what you've forgotten, if I ask you, who are you? Well, you say, I'm Paul Jones, or whatever your name happens to be. I say, oh, no, 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 no don't, don't give me that stuff. Who are you, really? And you think, um, whoa, of course, I'm just, I'm just me. No, I don't, don't give me that. I, I don't want to hear all that nonsense. You're, you're playing a trick on me. Really, deep down, who are you? I don't know. Well, that's the thing to find out. That's the thing that's been forgotten, see? That's the underside of the tapestry, the thing that's been left out. Because what we are carefully taught to ignore is uh, that every one of us fundamentally deep deep inside let's put it that way is a an act of a function of a performance of a manifestation of the works the whole blinking cosmos with all its galaxies and forever and ever and ever, whatever it is beyond that, what uh, you might call God in the Western tradition, or Brahman in Hindu philosophy, or Tao in Chinese. Every one of us is really that, but we are pretending we aren't. And we are pretending with tremendous skill and deception. Now, what I would call a really swinging human being is a person who lives on two levels at once. He's able to live on the level of being his ordinary ego, his everyday personality, and play his role in life and do observe all the rules and so on that go with that. But if he's only on that level, if he's only playing that kind of thing and thinks that's all there is, it becomes a drag. And he starts being the kind of person who feels that he's just got to go on surviving. See? It's terribly important to go on surviving, to live. And uh, he works at that. And his uh, children learn the same attitude from him. And they, you know, he says, well, I, I've got to survive because I've got all these children I've got to support and so on and so forth. And then they take the same attitude. And they breed up children, and they feel compulsive about supporting them, because they've got to go on. And so nobody really has any fun. It's just, <coughs> we've got to make this thing, you see. And you don't have to. See, whenever I get somebody who comes to me and says, I really can't go on, and I have to commit suicide, I say, well, that's entirely, uh, you're, you're right. There's really no reason why you should go on, and if you want to commit suicide, do it. You can check out. Of course, this <coughs> reduces anxiety. When they feel free to commit suicide, they don't really have to commit suicide so, so much. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you can commit partial suicide. 